I've had endless difficulties with this mold. The piece, the legs and the antlers are too fine, so it always breaks when it's coming out. And a comment by someone who watched one of my videos has helped me resolve the problem, and I now have a beautiful buck. The piece of advice that worked so beautifully was to take the mold where you know it's really thin and using a scalpel, just enlarge the mold. So the this leg I've already done, and as you can see, it could be done a little bit more. So I'm just gonna take my scalpel, and this is tricky and you have to be careful and you'll notice that I actually cut a little too deep, but it didn't affect the molding. So you're gonna bend it back and work your scalpel in there ever so gently using enough pressure but not too much and that's the tricky part just making sure that you get in there and you remove what you want removed without destroying the mold and it takes time and you shave little tiny bits at a time don't try to do too much at one time because you will definitely destroy the mold and then once you're done, you have a wider leg and it works beautifully for freeze and fuse. So I'm gonna finish adjusting this mold and then I'll come back when I start filling it with glass. I ended up using uh, another tool as well. So the scalpel, I did a lot of the work, but also I used embroidery snips because when you were going along the front of the leg and you needed to cut a large section at one time, it was actually much easier to lay the snip in and just clip it off than it was to use the scalpel. So the plan is to make a round ornament with the buck and some trees, some snow in the background. So I wanna make a few more of the bucks now that I've modified the mold. I've been using French vanilla to do the antlers. I think I'm gonna try one with dense white I've been using you know, woodland brown, I believe, woodland brown opal powder. And I wanna try one with Sienna transparent powder. Once you get them super thick like this, the transparent often presents a little bit more opaque. So we'll see. But for now, this is the woodland brown. And I just use these little containers for a lot of different things. I'm gonna add water. Stir it up until I get a slurry. I used to do it with an eyedropper and be really, really careful about the amount of water. But then I realized that if you put way too much water, you can just let it sit and pour the extra water off. And then you end up with the perfect level of slurry. I like to start with the antlers and then using some type of little stick, popsicle stick or you know, craft stick. You're going to dip in, get some powder. Make sure it's really full make sure it gets all the way to the end but you don't really want extra so I, I use the scalpel this time because it's out but I often use a popsicle stick you just go around the cavity part of the mold and get the rest of that off because it will freeze and it will fuse this very thin layer which you can trim off later but I have found that occasionally when you're trying to trim it off you break the thing and I don't want to do that so I've got trees I will also need those. I've been using a combination. Well, this one is Kelly green with a little bit of brown. This one I believe is spring green. I often put little bits of a couple different greens in the cup. I think this one is mostly spring green with a little bit of, uh, maybe it's olive with a little bit of spring. You do the same thing. You just put it in the mold. 
tapping, pressing, make sure it gets into every single little spot. Make sure that if it looks a little too watery, pour off a little more water. You're definitely going to collect some of the extra water at the paper towel. Once you're done with these and you've filled the mold to your liking, you've gotten the air bubbles out, you've gotten the extra water off, then you're going to put it in the freezer. If you have a traditional refrigerator frozen food compartment or even a big freezer, they have a defrost cycle. And during that defrost cycle, they're going to warm back up. They're also going to suck away some of the moisture. So if you're putting it in your freezer, you've got about an hour. And then it's going to start having a negative impact. So you, you can't leave these overnight. Usually they're ready to unmold about half an hour. But I wouldn't leave them any more than in, uh, maybe an hour and a half would be maximum. Because at that point, it starts pulling moisture out of it. And then when you try to unmold it, it's going to fall apart. And you just, you really don't want that. If it does fall apart, you just put it back in the cup, mix it up, redo it. Not that big of a deal, but you'd like it to be done fairly soon. And this little extra bit right here. You know, out of the way. Now rather than later. Little places where you did not get glass. You really should go back and make sure there's glass in there. Otherwise you're going to lose that detail. But these are just about ready for the freezer. I'll come back when I'm unmolding. The tricky part is once it's out of the freezer, you want to work quickly enough to get it out of the mold before it starts to thaw but not so quickly that you break parts off. So you start by gently pulling the mold. Oh, see, I already did it a little too hard. And that antler came off. Which is unfortunate because most of it came off just fine. So I'll have to retry that one. Sometimes there are days where things work really well and other days where you struggle. That is the way of glass. And into the freezer they go. This has really gotten challenging today for some reason. And I may end up doing it off camera because I think trying to film it. Oh, no, here we go. Let's see if we can get those legs out. So certainly trimming the mold made a difference. It's still not the easiest mold to work with. But you can get it to work. Ah, there he is. And I am not going to trim off those little extra bits. I'm going to leave them right where they are. And I'll trim them off after it's fired. So I'll do a couple more trees, get this on the, in the kiln, and fire it tonight, and I'll show you what it looks like in the morning. Adjusting the mold made it much, much easier to use. So these are ready for the freezer. You'll notice the tree, I did not fill the whole bottom. I actually want a combination of taller trees and shorter trees. So I'm gonna cut it off right about there. And then I'll make a few that are even shorter. So I'll have a variety in my woodland. I also want a dough.
So this one is ready for the freezer. I just omitted the antlers. I'm going to have to trim a little bit by the ears. And I will try to do that when it is still frozen. As a result of following the suggestions of the viewer, I now have enough bucks to do the two projects that I was hoping to do. So thank you so much for your comments, questions, suggestions. Thanks so much for watching and thanks so much for subscribing.